Good morning and welcome back to a glorious morning on my plot and you will be aware I'm sure um, it's three weeks I think since I posted a video and as I told you at the time that was because the next weekend was my daughter's wedding which we've now had and it was a glorious event the following weekend we were meeting them on Exmoor at Dulverton for a camping weekend which we did they had a week away after the wedding in Cornwall or a few days and then they came up in their camper van from Cornwall to Somerset and to the wonderful Exmoor National Park and we met them for a weekend and the weather was glorious and we had a fantastic couple of days with them so um, uh, I've, I've, I've missed you <laughs> and um, but I don't regret being away. I've, we've had my wife and I have had a most fantastic time. The wedding was spectacular. My daughter looked stunning. I now have a son-in-law, um, and it's all good news as far as the family is concerned. Um, yeah, we we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves. But now life is back to normal. So I'll show you some photographs of um, the wedding. Uh, I do have a few video clips, but I'm not going to post those because they've got music on them and there's copyright issues and so on. Um, maybe uh, there was a videographer at the wedding, so my daughter and her husband are going to get a video of the event, and I'm sure she'll post it. And when she does, I'll um, I'll tell you how to find it. She has her own YouTube channel, Charlotte Jordan, um, so you'll be able to have a look at that then. I'm sure. Anyway, back to the plot. So, what a busy time. I'm, I'm trying to restrain myself, as I've said to you many times before, from getting a little bit overexcited and anxious, because there is so much to do. You know, I've barely been up here the last two weeks, and so the weeds got frantic, and there's stuff in the greenhouse that's growing on, stuff needs to go in, you know, so on and so forth. If you've got an allotment or a garden where you grow fruits and vegetables, you know that right now, the weather is superb and it's a wonderful time um, and all that work you put in in the late winter and early spring to grow on your seedlings it, you know it's an important time to get them in so um, although I haven't had much time up here um, I've been quite busy in the garden of an evening and in my spare time so what have I been doing and what have I got to do Excuse me if I look at a few notes. So what have I done since we saw you, I saw you last? I've sown more carrots and parsnips. That initial sowing I did of carrots where I covered them over, um, unusually I didn't have a lot of success. I suspect I just went early and the night times were just too cold. But I've got, I have sown more and the parsnips are now coming up um, in the tubs, which I'm really pleased about. Um, I've planted some peas, we'll see that in a moment. Um, I've planted my first, uh, my, I've got two lots of second early potatoes, Charlotte and Kestrel. They're now all either in tubs at home and I've planted some Kestrel in the ground. John, my friend here, he planted Kestrel second earlies last year in the ground and there was a perfectly good crop. Nothing was eaten, there were no holes in the potatoes. So I, on his recommendation, I'm trying them this year. So we'll see how that goes. But they're all in the ground and not only that, there's a very early sh showing of tips of the um, potato plants coming up through the ground so I shall have to keep my eye out for frosts. Um, I've created a rather Heath Robinson cold frame there out of old uh, kitchen tiles and one of these shower screens I've got. In fact yeah you can see it it's just there. There. Um, I created that yesterday actually um, just because the, uh, the greenhouse at home is full the cold frames here are full and I've got more stuff to, to put somewhere but it's not quite ready to go in the ground. So I've made that just to give them a little bit of protection from the nighttime temperatures and I shall be putting some spinach and stuff in that today. Oh, um, and there's netting. I've put netting up. The stuff I sewed up the holes, um, I've put the canes in with the uh, mushroom tops to protect the net cane uh, the netting and I've put some of the netting in place ready for today to lift it a little bit, get in there and put some of my brassicas in. 
I might be going a little bit early. I mean, the plants are a good size, but anyway, um, we shall see. And because I have club root on this site, I only grow, grow club root resistant varieties. And when I plant them, and I try to make sure that they're a good sized plant, I put some uh, garden lime in the planting hole and I've had nothing but touch wood, nothing but success with my brassicas since I started doing that. So I've got that to do today. And I've got more um, peas to go in today, so that leads me on to what we're doing or I'm doing today. Um, all the grass areas need cutting. My canal that goes down the other side of the netting, that all needs cutting. And I've mentioned before that there's an extra piece of ground over there next to my plot that was used by Bridget and her husband John, but they gave it up uh, a year over a year ago now, and the the owner has never let it. I've let him know it's there, so has Bridget, but he's never let it, and it's just sitting there generating uh, weed seeds. So today I'm going to strim it all down and then cover it with plastic sheeting and membrane that I've got so that if somebody wants to use it, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to start to kill off the, the growth. Um, and if nobody uses it, which I suspect is the case, I might plant my pumpkins on it because it's wasted land and that's you know, it's just not acceptable. It should be used. That's what the whole point of this area is. So um, that's going to be quite a big job. And unfortunately, because it's uh, Easter Sunday, John is at chapel, so he won't be here to help me. But um, that's a job I've got today. Um, I've got some tubs that have grown daffodils, and they've been glorious uh, this spring. But I've got daffodils growing in beds where I don't want them, and I've got two empty tubs. So I'm going to dig up the daffodil bulbs now that they've gone over, and put them in these two spare tubs that I've got nothing in, so that next spring I have a full display from the five tubs I've got. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I said I'm going to plant some brassicas that I've got up here today. I want to sow more carrots and I'm going to pick another uh, harvest of rhubarb. The rhubarb, I've never seen rhubarb as healthy as the stuff I've got on my plot. It's beautiful and it tastes fantastic. So I shall be taking a good uh, size harvest of that home today. We're actually having a rhubarb with our Sunday dinner tonight, but it's made up of the frozen mixed fruit we picked last summer. So this rhubarb I'm picking today, Cheryl has agreed that we process it and put it in the freezer. Pardon me. So, uh, a busy time. Um, I'm glad to be back. Life returns to normal. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what I'm go has got, I've got going on in the garden at home. And from there, we'll look at some photos um, of Charlotte and Carl's wedding. Enjoy. I have to say Cheryl's none too pleased with the conservatory being used as a tomato rearing centre. But they are doing rather well in here. And it's that exciting time when I'm starting to move stuff out the greenhouse and up the allotment. And in the greenhouse, this um, little setup I have for my um, P. Alderman has been extremely successful this year. Um, bit of a bare patch just there, but I can always, when I put it in the ground, I'll put a few pea seeds in just to thicken it up. And the ones on the top only went in yesterday, I think. So, what else have we got? There's a tomato there. Um, Cour de Bleu, a large, large sort of beefsteak tomato I think. Then I've got uh, courgettes, um, a second sowing of um, cauliflower. The leeks that I'm growing in these individual cells are all doing quite well. Then I've got some sweet peas. I've just sown this morning the gourd birdhouse. I really do hope they germinate. I'm quite excited about that. Then over there is some uh, cuttings I took from the lovely rose we've got in the front garden, Lady of Shalott. So um, they're coming on really well. That is an avocado seed that has 
sprouted and is doing quite well. It's just a fun experiment. And then in here, um, that's the perpetual spinach that I grew the last two years was very successful. I've never had any success with spinach. It always bolts. But this perpetual spinach does very well. Um, and then some lettuces, more um, beetroot and uh, spring onions and so on. Then over here on the bottom shelf, more uh, sweet peas. There's some basil in there. And then these are all flowers. They're cosmos. This one is sunflower teddy bear. That's a beautiful flower. I'm hoping they germinate. Then some more onions that I've grown from seed, more lettuce, and these are my um, Brussels sprouts. And as you just saw in my montage, um, that's three rows of the four rows of peas in. The other two pieces of guttering that will do that, uh, the last one here, as you just saw again, um, are still in the greenhouse uh, germinating. But um, very pleased with that. Let's hope it gets away from all the pests and critters and uh, should have a good crop of peas this year. The garlic's doing well. This is uh, Provence white, planted uh, in the autumn and really thickening up a treat now. Looking very good. A bed needs hoeing today at some point. I have kestrel in the ground, as I mentioned, and they're just starting to stick their heads up now. And you can see, if you ignore the weeds, there is a discernible row there. And I've not touched the weeds in this bed, obviously, for fear of chopping off the tops of my potato plants. But once they're up about six to eight inches and I um, earth them up, those weeds will get destroyed in the process of doing that, hopefully. This is how the uh, lower part of my plot is looking. Um, you'll see here, these comfrey plants are now starting to develop. And I've left them in deliberately because I will harvest those um, for feed and fertiliser. Um, I'm going to pan you round. Here is my rhubarb bed looking absolutely fantastic. But the reason I brought you here is this is the piece of ground here, this square, that um, 
I said has been left untended for over a year now. So today I'm going to strim that down and cover it. So Lexi, how is my allotment? Tickety boot. <laughs> I say you nailed it. You did. So there's the uh, dug up daffodils out of my vegetable beds. I dug the pot out, stuck them in as deep as I can get them, back filled with the soil and then watered the soil in so it fills in around the roots and all being well next year I'll have five full pots of daffodils on display that will be nice and while I'm here there's one of the two um, blackberry plants that came from my back garden that I'm growing up and over this um, arch the one on the other side is taking a little longer to sprout but it is sprouting so I don't think I'll get much growth over this arch this year but in the next year or two to come I'm hoping it'll um, be a real feature. Um, I've said probably too many times that you know I'm fascinated by health and how so much of what we're told in the socially accepted story is um, not true and is simply marketing by corporations. And I'm particularly interested in the link between evolution and our current health um, situation, which is extremely poor. Um, I'll give you a really good example of that, um, and that is the fright and flight response we have. You know, when we were um, exposed to predators and risks in the past, and indeed today, we have this fright and flight uh, mechanism which you know you feel the adrenaline pump through your body in an instant your hairs stand up on your body which years ago would have made you look bigger to a predator um, and you get this rush of adrenaline into the muscles to enable you to run as fast as you can and to escape the threat or the risk etc and that's a that's a survival mechanism that we had as we evolved what we've done with it now is we've turned it on its head and the same uh, chemicals that are designed to enable us to survive through anxiety, um, depression, risk uh, or um, just the general worry and stress of life. You have a constant drip, drip, drip of these chemicals into your bloodstream which it was never designed to do. We were never designed to live under the anxiety and stress that modern life has created and it's extremely harmful to the immune system and to health. So a mechanism designed to help us survive, we have turned it on its head and it's now harming us. Um, and I've looked at being a, a self-employed gardener, most of my customers are widows, the men have all died. Um, and you think, well, you know, years ago you could explain the, the premature death of men through, you know, the lifestyles they led. You know, they, they fought in the wars, they uh, went down the mines, they ploughed the fields. Um, hence the lunch that was called a ploughman's lunch. <laughs> I'm not going there anymore. Uh, but that's not the case anymore. Men work in offices, they wear suits and ties, or they work from home in their pyjamas, as they have in the last two years. So you can't put it down to a, a, a physically exerting life. And one of the hypotheses put forward by many scientists who studied this is iron. Iron, in small amounts, regulated by the body, is extremely good for us. But just because it's good for us doesn't mean more is better. And what we do now with the amount of meat we eat, we have massive excess amounts of iron in the body. Women have a huge advantage in this, in so much as they have, uh, once a month, they have a menstrual cycle in which they bleed. And th this has been studied, and they bleed out in the bloodstream the excess iron in their bodies. Men don't have that mechanism. So over a lifetime, men build up this vast ex uh, excessive amount of iron and it, it, it promotes the aging process. Now that's one hypothesis, uh, um, there are others but um, here's an interesting fact about the diet you eat and the consequences of it. When we eat meat and we gain excess iron the body has no process for removing that iron because we're not meant to eat the amount of meat we eat. When we eat vegetables which contain all the iron we need 
because it's in vegetables which we evolved to eat and digest the body once it's got the exact requirement level of iron it needs it then sheds the excess it can do that with vegetables it can't do it with meat interesting well there's my Brussels sprouts planted for the year roll on December Well that's all the cover I've got, so that last bit on the end there, I'll have to leave. But I've left the two comfrey plants sitting proud so I can harvest them. And that, that'll suppress the weeds enough I think. Um, and like I say, if nobody claims it, I may even plant my pumpkins into that. Right, lunch time I think. Well, I've had a really good day. Um, really pleased to be back up the plot. I've had a lovely couple of weeks. Uh, really enjoyed myself. Real precious family memories. Um, I hope you enjoyed the few um, wedding photographs I've put up. Um, and on the next video, I'll show some of our Exmoor weekend. Um, but it's really exciting on the plot now. Um, Lots of stuff going in the ground, really pleased I've got the peas going, got one more row to put in. Uh, I've got some brassicas in the ground now and I've got more coming on in pots at home. Uh, I've got some, I, I didn't mention, I don't think I mentioned the beetroot. My first sowing, multi-sown beetroot is in. Still some of the bed empty so I can put some more in. Um, and I'm not sure about the asparagus. Some of it is growing away and others, when they, they originally showed the first little sign of spears, they've stalled since then. Whether they've been nibbled off by something or whether they've given up the ghost, I'm not sure. But I shall persevere and leave that bed. Um, but yeah, everything's going well. I've got that area of ground now covered. So if and when I choose to put my pumpkins in it, then it'll be good to go. Um, yeah, the plot's looking good. Um, lots going on. So thank you for joining me. I can't let this moment go without saying thank you to all my subscribers. I've reached 500, the dizzy heights of 500. Every one of you is appreciated, so thank you very much. It went up to 502 and it dropped down to 500. It may be that by the time this video goes live tomorrow, it's down below 500, but for however brief a moment it is, I was thrilled to bits to get to 500. So um, thank you for watching. Thank you for those who've subscribed. Please hit the thumbs up if you can. And whatever happens, I will be here next weekend. Um, we've got a week away in May, but other than that, you know, 
I'm back regularly on the plot, and of course in the summer you've got to be. Um, Terry's been up here today, so we had an hour sat with a coffee, um, chewing the fat. It was lovely to see him. Les came over, so there was the three of us, um, and a bit of a laugh. Um, but other than that, nobody's been up here at all today. Um, a lot of the plots are looking pretty ragged. Um, it's always a concern when you see that other plots aren't being maintained. Anyway, nothing I can do about that. All I can do is look after my own. So thank you very much. Good to see you. And uh, I shall be back next weekend. Until then, look after yourselves. Take care. And bye for now.